Good day. How are you doing today? So our task today is to talk about some of the program control functions, function blocks, some of that stuff that you can do to make your life easier when it comes to programming. Mostly we're going to deal with um, things you might be using before like subroutines or if you use other manufacturers, I may call them add-on instructions or um, <coughs> subroutines. And they're going to be similar here, except they don't call them straight that. They call them functions and function blocks. There is a difference, and it depends on what your application is. Uh, and right now, this is our main program. It's a simple main program. If I go online, you can see that I have, you know, a normally uh, an examine off on here is turning on a memory bit, and I have a basic, simple turn on switch, turn on light. Uh, Fairly basic boilerplate, what we've been doing forever in a day. Um, but in some instances, I might have a program that's pretty complex, or I might have something that I do over and over and over and over and over and over again, and I don't want to repeat it over and over and over and over again. Um, so what I can create is I can create functions that I can utilize and, and export willy-nilly here, there, and everywhere. Um, these are like subroutines. Um, but again, the, pro the big thing is that, though, is it can only be run once because it has no memory associated with it. Um, but we'll get into that. So if I say I have a basic start-stop circuit that I run and it's complex. Now, what the examples I'm going to show, you could probably program it just as fast on your own. But this is for showing the principle. And how I would add a, a, a function is if I go into add new block right here under, and you'll see functions and function blocks. Well, I'm just going to add a function. And if I hit, I can name it whatever I want. I'll call it um, startup. This is a way of organizing things, too. And now here's my startup. Oh, let me go in here and change this from... Uh, in a ladder, sorry. It was defaulted to function block. I want to change this to ladder. So it's there now, it's up back in ladder. And so I'm going to put the Mr. SR flip flop in there. And now I can go in here and put in a simple, simple switch to, and I'll just create a memory bit. Um, I'll just put a clock bit in there so that way it just keeps turning on and off, on and off, or whatever for the set so that I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. I can illustrate all the, the reset. And I'll turn on a random light. So here's my random light. Um, here. So now here's my function. It'll, it, it, and now I can download it. Everything's hunky dory. Hooray. Everything should be great. Load. And now I go online. I'm ready to go. And wait a second. Why is everything gray? I'm online, but everything is gray. That's because we didn't call it an OB1. So if I go here, you can see the difference. If I go live, everything's green and blues and everything's cool. But if I go back to the startup function, everything is gray. Even this clock bit that should be flashing on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Nothing is going on because this function hasn't been called to be run. So if I go offline... I can, and just for just for kicks, I'm going to just delete this light, and I'm going to drag my function right over here. Because now, if this switch turns on, I can call my function. You don't need this here. You can have your function always being called, and I'll show you that in a second, but I'm just going to demonstrate some stuff here. And I'm going to... Uh, download this 
write things up, go online, and now here we go. If I turn on my switch, my light is uh, my. If I go down to my startup, you can see you'll see the difference. It's called, and you can see this is flashing. This is not, but the light is now on. So, so now the light's on. If I turn off the switch here, uh, my first switch is calling my, my program. Notice now this is not call it my not my program my function. I turned off this this tag one this first switch, but now watch. Everything is live, and locked into a previous state. And if I would go into my if I want to just to show you this, uh, I'm going to show all tags. So what, let me show it. Oh, go, Mr. Friend, the watch table, add new, uh, go to watch table one, and I will put in um, light, you know, light three, light four, just sits there. Go to good old friend, Mr. Watch table, you'll see it's on. Even though that this is not being called, because what you have to be careful with the function, and is is nothing gets changed unless that function is called. So now it's on. I I turn on my reset, turns off my light, and if I go back to my watch table, you can see that this is off. So if you're work, this works just. This is just like a subroutine in other fun and other applications. But I can always call it on and it will run. So that's this is really handy. So if I, it's a good way to organize your program. So if you have a function that that just is like jogging your motors or or doing a count, but it's fairly specific. It's fairly the same. You can copy and paste it multiple times. If your hardware is the same, every Bob's your uncle, everything's hunky dory. So that's a function. But if you try to do it again on different circumstances, it will not work. So if you got something complex, but the, the logic is the same, but the hardware changes, or you want it to be a lot more flexible, that's where I would use a function block. And how I would do a function block is is again I would go to add new block function block make sure you can ladder you know and I, since we've talked about counters I will say um, final countdown because that is a countdown because that is uh, maybe something I want to do in multiple programs so final countdown something else to keep in mind with functions it's probably a good idea and you could have done this with you know function blocks is right up at the top here under block interface here see that where, where I'm highlighted if I hit the arrow you'll see things that you can add input output in out temporary um, constant startup value this is in the function this is in the, the function itself you could actually set up temporary placeholders here and make it make it go um, I'm going to demonstrate how that works with the function block, but if you go into function block, you'll notice that it's this. There are similar things, but different. Um, well, per, you know, if I do a side by side, you have a return value and a startup value here, but on a, on the other one, that's missing. But I can go in and start saying input. You know, start. I can hit enter. I can name this a bool. I can do um, stop. Okay. I can do my output. I can say kill switch. I can also put in temporary. 
So temporary things would be like, you know, this is really good math, but I don't know. Um, timer go. I can put in constants. I can change these things. So for instance, if this is my input, I can, um, on an integer, Timer go, I could put in a constant that will be used all over the place. And then I could start programming. So I can put my little here and I can drag down my start. And at any time where you see a little hashtag or ampersand, whatever you call it, the new people call it hashtag uh, or pound symbol, that means it's a temporary use only in the program. And so I'll put in a stop here. And may I put in, you know, I'll put another SR because I like SRs. And I will put in the temper, I know, temporary timer go. Okay, just timer go. And then down here, I can then use that timer go tag. And little TO. Now, it created a system block. It's kind of like system block inception a little bit. Um, but there's my system block. And for pre, you know, for pre, I can put in probably. My timer set, it may not like it because it's not the right setup. I know this is possible. I'm just trying to be. There, I just had to change that to double integer. So that was the issue, double integer versus integer. And I can put out, an I can make an output with a lapse time, like timer set. And if I want a timer, you know, timer queue, and then I will put an output for my kill switch. I don't know if this is appropriate. Uh, this is just some random setup, basically. It sets timer go. Once it goes, it goes, and et cetera, et cetera. But again, how I would utilize this is just like in the main, it's just like in the main routine, except when I call this, it's going to give me a data block that it will create. And I can start putting in things like, I don't know. Five seconds. T number. Oh, yeah, let me go back in here. I had to change that timer to a time. I've been working too much with Alan Bradley, so sorry. Change that to a time, so then I could go into um, my main routine. I'm going to delete this again because it's been changed. Pull this up. Now it's going to create a new data block. I can delete the, uh, that's data block one. Final countdown, data block one, it's somewhere in there. 
but I can go in here and call it, you know, five seconds or T hashtag. I can make, so this, this down here, I can put that there. I'll delete this. I'll put this down here because I'm being lazy and I will just make my output attached to memory bit. Uh, light to, and if I wanted to, I could set up an output word for the accumulated, so M word, let's just do four, it hasn't been. So there I go. Everything should be good. But now this function is commissioned, and just clean things up a little bit. Compile, download. Load. And now here's ever here's this and if I go into my but the, here's the problem with this is you can't read this in real time. That's the only problem with the function blocks because it could be commissioned multiple times. And so nothing is happening right now. Probably because I have a stop on, so let me toggle this bit to one, uh, zero, or one. And now you can see it's timing up. Now I may need to change this to a timer bit so it's actually timing, but you can see that this is actually operating like I wanted it to. Um, you know, so if I go offline. I could then use the same thing to go into here, create another setup with different applications. Um, so I'll, I'll just put the always true, I'll put the always false in here. Um, and then I can change this to T hashtag 10 seconds. And again, I get got all this other stuff, and I can go from there. So now go down, go online, download, hit load. Hit uh, preview. And now, look, both are both are operating. And now, if I come in here to my system block, false true. It's timing. I probably should have made a thing to see if it was actually timing. I'll do that in a second. Um, but yeah, there you go. You get the idea. But the nice thing is I can do this. I can I can take this one function block and and, and institute it multiple times. Um, it creates a data block every time, and it's, you're going to use the same setup every single time that I, I set it set it up. That is really nice. And if I go into my data blocks, data block two, you can see here's my temporary tags and every and here's all my tags. Here's all my tags. And it's got values associated with them as they run. So that's the major difference between functions and function blocks. Use appropriately and go from there. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, what I will do one last little one thing I did not mention that you can do with program control um, is jump label works just like a jump. Any other? Um, I'm going to move this up here because this will help. So say if I want something to disappear. So in my program control bits over here on the side, you'll see a jump and a jump label. You need both or you're going to get an error. 
But if I go in here, I, I, I need to put, put my jump and I'll put my label in. So I'll, let me add a network. I'm going to close this down. So now I got something between a jump and a label. I'm just going to put a switch in here. And now here's my label. So label. And now I can call label. So you got to do it one against the other and then go from there. Um, but now everything between that jump and that label is not going to be used. So if I go, if I download, go online. Oh, yeah, I hit empty network. Sorry. So now I'll sign it and there's no empty network. Overwrite. And now if I go online, you will see everything is green and running. Let me hide this so we can see this better. So here you can see everything's running, everything's hunky-dory. But once I hit my jump label, the label is active. And you can see that this middle part is grayed out because it's no longer being true. So it's a way of you going and skipping over parts in your program so that you don't need if you don't want them or if there's a fault condition you can so skip skip over it